Well, hello everybody out there. Welcome to another episode of the 11 Bang Bang channel. I'm your host, Ethan Woods, and you'll have to forgive me because I just got off work. It's been a pretty warm day today. But today I thought we'd just talk about this little uh, mystery Lafa show revolver here, you know, uh, a little 32 uh, pinfire. And, uh, what is that sound? Oh, no! Oh. Who are you? Goodbye! So if you couldn't tell, I may or may not have a bit of a side hobby here, and that is I'm a bit of a uh, collector, if you would, and builder of Kalashnikov pattern rifles and shotguns. And the bad thing is, this isn't even all of them. Uh, yeah. So, what I'm going to do is basically with this video, even though I know it's not really the older guns, I'm going to basically just talk you through some of my AKs, and this is, like I said, it's my side hobby, aside from black powders, and uh, yeah, we'll just talk about them, go through them one at a time, and uh, I don't know, maybe tell you some stories along the way. The real reason why we're doing this video, though, is because I got to talking to uh, AR American, and we were talking about, you know, just doing a fun video that didn't require a whole lot of maintenance. And you'll have to forgive me, guys. I'm, I know, I'm sweating like a pig right now. That's because to make these videos, we have to turn the air conditioner off. Uh, but, yeah, we were just kind of wanting to make a funner video. Not a whole lot of cleaning, not a whole lot of prep. Just Basically, I'm just going to show you guys all these guns. We're going to shoot them, and uh, we'll talk about them a little bit. So where do we start? Well, for this gun right here. This is a Wasser 1063, and yes, that is an old Tapco Pineapple magazine that I got with the rifle. And uh, I'll just tell you a little bit of the story of this rifle and how it kind of fell into my hands. But I got, I had a Marlin 336. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of told this story on the channel before, but what happened was I went and I built some fence, and uh, it was $100 a mile, and we built five miles of fence. I made $500. I wanted a Marlin 336 really bad, and I ended up making enough money to go buy me a Marlin 336 and a box of 3030 shells. Well, I made it about a quarter of the way through the box, and the rifle wouldn't feed. And mind you, I also got this from Walmart, and I was really disappointed in the rifle, pretty upset about it. Garrett, being Garrett, saw what I had, and he had this AK. And he traded it to me for that Marlin 336. And this AK, I went from paying, you know, $20 a box of 3030 to paying, back then I think it was like 475 for a box of 76239. And that was a really good thing for a, a young man who wants to shoot a rifle a lot. Um, Garrett had actually got this AK back whenever it was brand new, just after the sunset on the uh, assault weapons ban. That would have been about 2004, 2005 time frame. Uh, what happened was, is Garrett was going off to college, and he went and he had a Longhorn cow that he was going to go sell off to go raise some money for his tuition. Well, Garrett went off, and she was a mean Longhorn, by the way. She was real mean. Garrett goes off the sale barn with his cow, and he comes back with his buddy, who had a Bushmaster AR-15, and we'll talk about that in a second here. And uh, I, we all knew that Travis was his name, had this Bushmaster, and it was really a cool rifle, but, you know, it was kind of one of them things. It was the time period whenever you could get an AR, but you were going to pay for it. And uh, Garrett comes up to the house, he goes, I remember he opens up the, dr the, <laughs> the door on the old 1990 Chevy half ton of his, and he opens up the door, he says, come here, i got to show you something. I'm like, what is it? And, of course, Garrett's buddy is over there sitting in the other seat. And uh, he has this box, and it's got, I just remember it had, like, gr oil stains on the box. And uh, he said, I'll show you this, but you can't tell Mom and Dad. And I'm like, okay. And he opens up the box, and in that box was this rifle right here, this Wasser 1063, and this magazine that came with it. And I remember, I didn't know a whole lot about firearms back then, but I thought that Garrett had a Tommy gun. And I announced it very loudly. I said, Garrett had a, Garrett's got a Tommy gun! And uh, funny thing was, is he was in a little bit of hot water because he spent his college money on this on this rifle. And I remember him 
telling my mom and dad that he had bought it for a really good price. I think it was like, he's like, I bought that for like $150. He's like, yeah, I kind of probably paid too much for it. I think I spent like $300 for it. That tells you kind of how long ago this was. But yeah, Garrett had this rifle and then I got it from Garrett and I've had it ever since. And if this isn't, of course, how it looked whenever it first came, uh, we have the grip here, which I got off of a buddy of mine who comments on the channel quite a bit. Uh, this is off of an, this is actually off of an, uh, AIM-74 rifle. Uh, and then the pistol grip here, that's not Romanian, that's actually Bulgarian. Uh, the rifle shoots really good, guys. I've always shot very well with this rifle. Matter of fact, when I was off in basic training, my uncle, my late uncle, uh, had borrowed this rifle. And, uh, he went everywhere with it, and he took it out, they would be out there building fence and he'd be killing coons and possums and coyotes and armadillos and everything under the sun he, you know if it you know he was that kind of guy and he took to calling her old blood letter and that is what this AK's name is and I think it's kind of fitting considering Kuger uh, if I'm not mistaken is actually in Transylvania in Romania today so <clears throat> There is that. So this is Bloodletter. This is my oldest rifle. Wasser 1063. Awesome rifle. I've ran, I would say, over about 10,000 rounds through this rifle. At least. Uh, I've shot this gun a lot. Oh, by the way, this is the original sling that came with it. And I have the original oiler too, but it's not uh, here with me. Also, if you couldn't tell how long ago this was, uh, the bayonet lug has been cut down. So, this rifle's a very good rifle, except for there is one thing that I've noticed, and that is over years and years and years of use, of all the things that would wear out on this rifle, kind of surprised me, the magazine catch wore out. So, it feeds perfectly reliably with any kind of polymer magazine. However, whenever you switch to a steel magazine, what happens is, is that there's enough back and forth travel that it'll actually go and usually it tips down and the nose of the projectile ends up getting caught up on the feed ramp but the steel magazines do look a lot better in this rifle so let's go ahead and take it out and do some shooting with it and uh seeing how youtube has certain rules about this thing magazine's already in it's a 29 round magazine and uh we'll uh make it work so let's see here let's give her a few shots old blood letter Try 150. 300. No, we better not punch any holes in our target out there. You won't. Okay. 350. 350. Wait, let me reset. All right, 350. to the right. Ah, that's good enough for that rifle. Alright, so um, this is a collaboration video with Ethan from the 11 Bang Bang Show. Um, I talk Colts all the time with Garrett. Me and him usually talk about Colts. I usually give Ethan a hard time about Smith & Wesson and Schofields. But me and Ethan were talking and realized we both really have a, a love for the AK-47 or AK-47 variant type rifles. This is a Romanian AK that I picked up years and years ago. It was a kit um, that I put together and on the front of it here I have the AMD 65 muzzle brake um, and I have the AMD 65 stock on the back of this. But that's just a bare bones basic 
you know, AK. I like the folding stock. Uh, a lot of people don't like these. I really like these AMD 65 stocks. But other than that, it's, it's just a bare bones basic AK. This one is the one you've seen in the video of me shooting. And this one I went a little all out on. This was an AMD 65. Um, I turned the barrel down to 13 and a half inches, I think is what it was. And then I added this flash hider, pinned and welded it um, to give this thing a 16 and just over a quarter inch long barrel. But still give it the, the short barrel look. Um, I don't remember where I got the M-Lock rail from. Um, works good. I have a little red dot sight on it, uh, UTG. This thing's been on three different ARs, now it's on this. Always holds zero. Um, another AMD stock, uh, in case you haven't noticed, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people hate this stock, say it doesn't give a good cheek weld in that. I find I really, really, really like this stock. When I shoulder it and pull up, the red dot's right where I need it. Um, I don't have an issue with that at all. On this one here, when I put it together, I'm not one of them people that you got to build an AK authentic or nothing else. I used screws. They look kind of like rivets, but uh, it's just, I think they're 832, either 832 or 632. I think they're 832 screws. And uh, really like them. It has the U.S. palm grip on it. Uh, the stippling on it didn't work quite good enough for me. You know, when your hands are sweaty and that. So I just take a piece of bicycle inner tube, cut it, and stretch it over top. And that rubber really, your hand don't slide on it. I actually learned that from watching a video with uh, Chris Tano Pirano. He was talking about how he did that to a lot of his guns. Both of these fire good. This one in that video, um, no malfunctions, nothing, ran like a top. This one has, I don't know how many thousands of rounds through it. Um, it's got the, the same cap head screws for the, the stock, but on the front of this one, I just used hardware store rivets. And, you know, that's the cool thing about these AKs. You can build these things in, in a shed or a garage or in your living room with just the bare basic minimum tools. And as long as the head space is right, these things just run and run and run and run. I, I personally love the AK. I'm a big fan of it. Um, people have heard me say that for WROL situation, I grabbed the AR. And that's only because if you watch when all the mostly peaceful protests were going on in that, them protesters were stealing ARs out of cop cars. And 5.56 five, is the most common AR round. So living in the United States, I have ARs for my quote unquote WROL rifle. I'm not real good with the history on guns and that. Um, lots of channels out there that have really good information and history on guns but as you can see with both of these I'm not the guy that uh, worries about keeping them clone correct and all that I just build what I like and I shoot them and that's that's what I do with them I don't uh, I'm not one of them guys that the rivets have to be dimpled a certain way and you know you gotta have everything I mean both of these I think the only original parts on them is the front trunnion, the bolt, the bolt carrier, and the rear stock, I think, are the only things that are original AK on this one. The muzzle brake is. Um, these are U.S. made barrels. The front sight's U.S. made. Gas blocks U.S. made. Um, pistol grips are U.S. made with 922 compliant because I do run surplus AK mags. If you count the mags in your 922 compliant build, then technically 
if they wanted to get you, they could get you if you were running a surplus AR mag, like, or surplus AK mag, like the, you know, Russian Bakelite mags or whatever. So, when I build them, I build them with as many U.S. parts as I can to, so that that way if I do decide to use surplus mags or whatever, they're still compliant. And that's, I guess, really about all I got on them, too. Um, I don't know who makes the grip on this. I bought this grip. Man, I built this gun in 2002, I think. And uh, I bought this grip, I think, at a gun show or whatever. I mean, it's a solid grip. But the stippling on this thing and just the way it's shaped... It doesn't slide around in your hand. I mean, your hand just stays right there. So I don't have rubber on this grip at all. And like I said, I, I really, really like it. Um, it's just, I don't know, something about this gun. It, it's definitely one of my favorite, more modern guns. I like the old single actions. Some are my favorite pistols, single action Colts. Um, my favorite type of rifle is the big bore elephant guns and that but there's just uh i don't know something about an ak i really like an ak and i like ars too but like i said these ak's they're not uh they're not like the prettiest guns they don't have fancy bluing on them and that or fancy wood or nothing they're just a get down and dirty get it done gun and you got to appreciate that. They're kind of like the Glock of rifles. It's it's pretty hard to get one to quit running. Like that one there, thousands of rounds through it, and I'll bet you I haven't cleaned it more than three or four times. It just, you throw a mag in it, rack around in the chamber, and it always goes bang. You, you got to appreciate that kind of dependability and durability. Um, at some point in the future, I may actually do a durability test on this. I got to get more ammo. Um, I don't have a lot of 762 by 39, but maybe uh, we'll try and run a couple thousand rounds through it without cleaning it, kick it around in the dirt, and stuff like that. I will say that uh, this Bulgarian type flash hider, you can shoot this thing in just about pitch black, and there's hardly no muzzle you know you can't see no flame coming out the barrel with it but it does do something because this one here kicks and 762 by 39 does not kick bad anyway but you can definitely feel the difference in the recoil between this one and that one granted this one has a break but i had one of these on one of my ars too and it builds up back pressure or something but you can definitely it definitely has more recoil with this type of flash hider on it, but I mean this flash hider really does work. You, there's almost next to nothing as far as flash coming out of this when you shoot it even at night. So uh, that's it. This is my AMD 65, um, kind of a Alpha AK style to it. I mean that was the look I was going for. I really like the Alpha AK, and then. Uh, this is just the Romanian one with, without, you know, I literally cut the donger off and reshaped it. And like I said, I really liked the AMD stock, so I put that on there. And then a uh, buddy of mine gave me the AMD flash hider. And although, I mean, I do like it, like I said, it, it's a very effective, or not flash hider, but a very effective muzzle brake. So anyway, hope you all have a good day. Thank you. So now we move on to this one right here. This is one I built not too awful long ago. This is an AMD 65. And one of the, uh, well, let's just talk about some of the things on this gun that are a little weird. Uh, first of all, this gun is meant to be a short firearm. You can see we got the pinned and welded extension out there because, you know, Second Amendment infringements and whatnot. Uh, and we've got our stock right here. There's a push button on the bottom here. And we push that button up, and it's a little stiff, and out folds this T-stop. It'll lock in place. And we've got two pistol grips. The reason for that being is this is a metal 
hand guard and if you grab it like this for too long with bare hands <laughs> you're gonna burn yourself pretty good our sights go from uh, one to eight hundred meters uh, you have an A marked there for your battle sight setting and uh, yeah other than that though it's kind of just a run-of-the-mill AK there are some differences mainly in the front trunnion here it has what's called a step front trunnion we're going to see that again here in a second, which is going to be someplace you wouldn't expect to see a lot of Hungarian features. But uh, there's another AK that we're about to pull out here. It's got a lot of Hungarian features. You'll also notice we got this little 20-rounder tanker mag. And uh, the reason for that is, is because, once again, Hungary was doing like a lot of other countries, and they were m focusing on mechanized warfare. And they, the rifle kind of took a back seat to that. So... This rifle is very good for riding around in a tank, riding around in a BMP, a T-72, a T-80, things like that. It's going to work really good in. And contrary to popular belief, I can shoot this rifle quite well. Even with this T-shaped stock, which everybody loves to hate on, I can make it work. So yeah, there's that one, the AMD 65. Uh, this one is, by the way, built on a Childers, nope, Recreator Blanks receiver. So yeah, pretty cool gun. All right, now let's talk RPKs. Uh, these two, I both I built both of these. This one right here is built on a Childers receiver. This one right here, which is my favorite, I call her Matryoshka, which uh, we got a Matryoshka uh, doll there on the stock. Uh, but uh, these are kind of representative of two different eras of the RPK family in uh, Romania, because that's what these are, they're Romanian RPKs. Uh, what's the difference, a lot of people ask, between an RPK and a standard AK? Well, there's a few. For one, the barrel's 24 inches, whereas a standard AK is about 16 and a quarter. The barrel is a bull barrel, basically, at the back. It is extremely thick, and it has a much thicker hand guard up here. Uh, we have, obviously, our bipod and our bipod setting up here on the front. Uh, we have a cleaning rod guide, which is kind of odd <laughs> but uh oh and obviously the big thing if you can see it here is our paddle boat or our our boat paddle butt stock uh the reason this rifle is built the way it is oh also i forgot to mention the bulge uh front trunnion the reason this rifle is built the way it is is because it is built to have sustained fire for long periods of time a lot of people think that the barrel is the length it is to give you better range. Actually, no. This gun has the same velocity almost as a 16 and a half inch or 16 and a quarter inch AK. Uh, the reason for the full length of the barrel is because it's a better heat sink. There's more metal to absorb that heat coming off. And whenever I say that it doesn't have a whole lot more velocity, it really doesn't. So that's the one nice thing about 7.6239 is it doesn't matter. Well, it starts to matter after a point, but... Shorter barrels don't affect it near as bad as it does 5.56, five, and hence why you can see little 12 and a half, 10 inch barrel AKs, and they run phenomenal. I'll put in a video right here, I've already posted it on the channel, of me taking a Palmetto State Armory AK-104 with a 12 and a half inch barrel and shooting at 700 meters. Yeah, it was meters, so it's actually closer to like 740 some odd yards, and hitting a man-sized target with a cold bore shot. They're actually fairly decently accurate if you know what you're doing and you got a good one and some good ammunition. But yeah, so these guns are designed to absorb a whole lot of heat. Uh, as far as weight goes, they're kind of on the heavier side, but not really when compared to other light machine guns or automatic rifles. And that's what these are, they're automatic rifles. They weigh in at about, I think, like 14, 15 pounds. Uh, yeah, this one right here is one of my favorite AKs. Uh... Oh, and let's talk about why it's one of my favorites, and that is because of the bipod. So, over here, you can see that we have this right here, and I'm going to try not to knock that other one over. This bipod is very simple. You basically just fold it up, there's a little clip here on the bottom, and it clips under the barrel. You want to deploy it, you push open that clip, it flies open, you push down, your bipod is ready to go. I like the simplicity of it. It's a Russian-style uh um, bipod and also if you'll notice you look at the receiver we have the dimpled receiver the dimpled magwell and that is because this is a 19 that's because this is a 1969 rpk it's actually a very early rpk for the romanians and it's a carbon copy 
of the Russian RPK at that time period. Now let's talk about when the Romanians started getting a little free willy with their uh, design. This one right here is a 1984 RPK. And uh, the way this, R this uh, uh, bipod works is it actually folds up just like the other one, but there's these two little cutouts on the bottom of the feet there. And they actually grab onto the ramrod or the clearing rod, which I like that design because that is the one thing about that one. That bipod sometimes just kind of goes free willy all over the place. But that's about where it stops because other than that, this thing gets really complicated. You got, uh, it's stiff. You got to fold it back up to unfold it. You've got these adjustable bipod feet. I, I'm just not really a fan of that. Uh, you can adjust your cant. You can adjust your, you can adjust a lot of things on this bipod. And for me, it just kind of seems like overkill. So let's go ahead and let's take out the RPK and do some shooting with it. So this is another one I built, guys. This is the RPK, or the PMMD64. Uh, I call her Matryoshka. Got a little Matryoshka nesting doll there on the buttstock. And uh, let's see what we can't do with this one. A little heavier. Three fifty. Let's use it how it's supposed to be used. Go into the ground. All right, and now let's talk about uh, another one of my what I call life and liberty rifles, and that is this rifle right here. This is a Palmetto State Armory AK-104 clone. Now, is it a true AK-104? No, not exactly. Uh, this one would be kind of competing with my RPK for if things are going down, this might be the one that I grab. Uh, the only difference is, is that uh, this one's not going to handle sustained fire as much, but it is a lot lighter. Uh, and uh, it's also much more compact. With that side folding buttstock, you get a very nice buttstock on this gun. I have a primary arms micro dot on it. Uh, this is one of the few tactical guns that I have, and I can shoot very well with this gun. It has an ALG trigger. Uh, it has a, um, I can't remember who makes that, uh, that uh, charging handle up there, but it, that's really nice. Uh, Palmetto State Armory puts these selectors on their AKs, which while not exactly correct, that is just as fast as an AR selector. Sorry guys, there it is. That's quick. Um, again, we got the pinned and welded booster on here because, you know, cop or Second Amendment infringements. But let me tell you a little bit about this rifle's features. This rifle is very loosely based on an AK-100 series, AK-104. And let's talk about some of the differences between it and a standard AKM. So starting off with some of the differences of the Type 100 series AKs versus, say, the AKM, is that these were never based directly off of the AKM. These are actually based off of the AK-74M. Uh, a few of the big giveaways are is... Most of your true Type 100 series rifles, or actually all of your true Type 100 series rifles, will have a side folding stock. Uh, that is this right here. You'll see there is a button over on this side. Also, you'll notice there's a little bit of a catch right here on the butt plate. And the way this works is there's also a hook up here on the front of the front trunnion. So, what you'll do is you push in on this button and you will start to fold up your stock. There's that hook that I was talking about, that little loop right there. Move them up together, and it hooks closed. Then, whenever you want to deploy your stock on the AK-100 series of rifles, there is a button on the back of the butt plate that pushes that hook open, and your stock comes out. Pretty good design. Uh, one of the 
failures of it though is you cannot fold it up if you have an optic on the optics rail unless you do like what I did and put a quad rail on here that co-witnesses with your front sides but anyhow I digress going back to the type 100 series uh, type 100 series was basically a way of Russia modernizing the AK platform and basically making it where all of their tooling could make all of the parts for all of the rifles for the most part. For instance, you can take a AK-104 bolt and if it's head-spaced right, you can put it on an AK-103 rifle. You can take an AK-103, 104, 105, 102, 101 butt stock and put it on an AK-74M. Uh, they are all, it's, it's basically for parts interchangeability. And when you hear the 100 series, that's mainly rifles for export. Uh, the Russians aren't technically using that many AK-100 series rifles themselves. Albeit, if you look, you see a lot of AK-103s and 104s in Ukraine right now being used by the Russians and the Ukrainians. Um, but yeah, it being a 104 means it is a 7.6239 rifle. Uh, you see we got that banana-shaped magazine there. Uh, what makes this not an AK-104 is the pin size on the buttstock, and we have a standard, if you open this gun up, I'll go ahead and drop the magazine. If you open this gun up, and I'm going to have to do a quick edit right here because YouTube doesn't like to show disassembly. If you see our bolt right here, we have what's called a thick stem bolt. A true AK-100 series rifle would have something more akin to an AK-74 thin stemmed bolt. Also, the gas piston, which I have right here, is got the machine grooves around the piston head. AK-100 series rifles won't have that. But when you look at this rifle from the outside, it looks like an AK-100 series rifle. Namely, the side-folding stock, which Kalashnikov USA did not do for a long time on air. AK-100 series rifles. And uh, also, there's another thing you see on the AK-100 series is that 90-degree gas block. Now, if this was truer to an AK-104, it wouldn't have that extended booster, but I digress. Second Amendment infringements. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is one of the few rifles that I didn't build that are AKs. Almost all of these, except for two of them, I think, I haven't built. And this is one of them. This one and Blood Letter are the only two I think that I'm showing today that I haven't actually built myself. So anyhow, let's go do some shooting with this rifle. Before. Look trick. what you did. <laughs> I just got done hanging those up. Uh, I felt that one kind of push away from me. Did you feel that one too? Mm hmm. 150. Yeah, 350. 350 yards. Yeah, so once again, this little PSA AK-104, it will also do the trick. Also, I got an ALT trigger in this one, guys. Pretty nice little rifle. Have you ever heard of the term FOMO? Yes, FOMO. Stands for the fear of missing out. If there was one country that ever suffered from the fear of missing out, that would have to be Yugoslavia. Yeah, Yugoslavian AKs. They're, as uh, Mishiko would say, and once again, like I've said before, guys, I strongly recommend if you like AKs, go check out Mishiko and uh, don't necessarily listen to what I have to say. Go listen to him. But uh, as Mishiko would say, Yugoslavian AKs are kind of their own kettle of fish. Uh, this is one that I built here not too long ago, earlier on this year. Beautiful rifle. Uh, I will admit this one's pretty. Uh, but let's talk about why, uh, or what, what's some of the differences between this one and say like a standard, which this isn't really standard, but it is an AKM. This is not an AKM. 
So first of all, I said the Yugoslavians suffer from the fear of missing out. And let me explain that to you. They wanted, you know, usually whenever you put together a squad or a team, you have somebody who is set up for one job and somebody who's set up for another and somebody who's set up for another. The Yugoslavians were really big fans of underfolder AKs. Uh, basically, what this meant was it was easier for their tanker crews, truck drivers, artillery men. They could use this underfolder. You could fold it up in this nice, short, handy package. Uh, but they wanted night sights on all their rifles. And so if you look here, and they actually still work. This rifle was made in 1990, by the way, the parts kit was. We have flip-up tritium night sights, and they still work. Uh, also, we have one on the front here. So, you can see there, I just flipped it up. That is also tritium. Uh, but wait, there's more. Because why have an anti-armor guy who can take out light-armored personnel carriers Whenever you can turn every rifleman into a grenadier to take out light armor. Because what we have here is a grenade sight, and I don't have one with me. I have it over at my house. But this also has what's called a spigot grenade launcher on it. And when you flip up that grenade sight, uh, that actually also shuts off your gas tube. So, there is that. Let's talk about some of its other features. Now, we talked about AKMs, AK-100 series, and we talked about Romanian AKs, or the Romanian RPK, excuse me. And you'll remember me talking about on the AKM, there was a flat-sided receiver by the front trunnion, whereas the RPK, there was a bulge. So once again, let me explain. AKM, the fighting man's rifle, flat-sided. The RPK has this bulge right here. Also, the RPK has a 1.5 millimeter thick receiver, and the AKM has a one millimeter thick receiver. Unless it's a Yugoslavian AK, which then the standard fighting man's rifle not only has a 1.5 millimeter thick receiver like an RPK, but it also has a bulge front trunnion. Also, another the really big giveaway on Yugoslavian AKs is look at your hand guards. You'll see I have one, two, three holes up there, ventilation holes, whereas on a standard AK and you have one, two. If you're ever looking at an AK on the news or something and you see three vent holes in the handguard, that means it's Yugoslavian. Uh, let me kind of tell you my story about Yugoslavian AKs. I have another one, and I, have actually, I actually have a video on it on the channel, the Yugoslavian M70. Uh, it's the fixed stock one. I don't have it over here with me, guys, right now, but I do still have it. Um, but I had a Yugoslavian M70. That was my second AK I ever owned after my Wasser 1063. Um, kind of tell you how long ago this was. My third AK was also a Yugoslavian AK, and it was an M70 AB2. Yeah, I, I love the Yugo AKs. My only thing with them is that I've noticed, though, is that, uh, it's almost like the Yugoslavians took the AK, and we're like, we like the AK, but how do we make it heavier? And uh, so, yeah, that's what they did. This thing is a lot heavier than your standard AK. I don't have a whole lot of footage shooting this one, guys. I'm sorry I went out to the range today, and I forgot to bring this one with me. But anyhow, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Let's move on to the next one. So I feel like for this next one, I need to, uh, you know, bring out this bad boy. <laughs> okay, all joking aside, guys, this AK right here is one that I uh, never really thought I'd be owning it. Um, yeah, these used to be what we call, and they kind of still are to a certain extent, we call them moon rocks because there was, there was more moon rocks in North America than there were of these kinds of AKs. This is a True Blue North Korean Type 68 AK. Not an AKM. We'll talk about that in a second. But anyhow, uh, yeah, I got this through a, uh, <laughs> An importer who did not import it as a North Korean Type 68. I will not mention who the importer is. They have asked people to kind of keep their names quiet. And what they are calling these rifles or these rifle parts kits. Because once again, guys, I built this one. Uh, they're kind of wanting to keep it on the down low because of sanctions. So first of all, guys, let me tell you why this is not an AKM. So it does kind of look like your standard AKM, but there are some big differences. Uh, let's start out at the back here. 
and that is you will notice we have this rather odd shape pull it up to again the standard you see that square backed receiver this one is the only one i can find that's got this weird kind of shape to it not only that it has inside of here what's called a weldment uh, instead of a standard rear trunnion it's actually a two-piece rear trunnion the rivets are wild on this one guys there's like one rivet every rivet has to go to every single hole i've noticed because there's different thicknesses in the trunnion and one of these long rivets on the back is just huge it's an extremely thick long rivet but uh let's go ahead let's talk about the uh the dust cover here it's kind of a rough stamped out uh dust cover pretty uh pretty unique uh also, the serial numbers on the dust covers are placed on the side here of the dust cover. It has a standard true AK-47, Soviet AK-47, a Type 3, I believe, uh, underfolding stock, which I will say this one good thing about Childers is that is the absolute tightest underfolder I've ever felt, and that is this is a Childers receiver, by the way, guys. Uh, moving on up, let's talk about this selector. This thing is odd. Uh, this thing is got these teeny tiny little nubbies right here. Whereas on like a standard AKM, you see how big that flat is. And on these North Korean ones, it's just this teeny tiny little ledge. Uh, kind of unique. Uh, anyhow, the, one of the really big giveaways is the bottom of the trigger guard right here. Uh, it's got a rib on it. Now you might be asking, why does this thing have a rib on it? Uh, that is because this rifle is designed to be light. Uh, and it is that. It's actually lighter than my AR-15. This rifle only weighs in about five and a half pounds. Uh, it's about the same weight. That it, it's about the same weight as an M1 carbine. Uh, but anyhow, I digress. Moving on up. Uh, now, another thing that makes this not an AKM is the front trunnion, which I can't really show you guys. But it actually has a Hungarian uh, front trunnion like on an AMD-65. Also, I was talking about uh, saving weight. You'll notice we got this standard solid wood pistol grip. The grip screw is hollow. Yeah, the pistol grip screw is hollowed out to save weight. Also, if you look at the bolt carrier, it's got lightning cuts all over the place on it. Um, talk about this rear sight. Now, these guns are kind of, yeah, the parts kits are not the best quality. Um, some of the springs are a little, uh, well, shall we say, less than desirable. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so there's that. Also, the handguards, instead of your standard AKM handguards that swell out on a true Russian, these ones almost have a small taper in. Uh, moving on up, you got your gas block up here. It's got these flat sides on it, kind of odd-shaped gas block. You have your sling, sling swivel mounted to the gas block itself. And uh, then there's this front sight block which has got this really weird arrangement where it's all hollowed out again to save weight uh guys that is one thing oh and by the way yeah these use muzzle nuts uh the way these are coming into the country is through a roundabout way a third party if you would most people are saying lebanon some people are saying africa uh there used to be rumors that these weren't true north korean ak's they were made on in africa in a mud hut with north korean tooling uh there's only one problem with that and that is the fact that uh, I've got two of these parts kits, and this one also has it. There is a North Korean star on the rear trunnion itself. So, yeah, they are North Korean Type 68s. Um, yeah, pretty cool rifle, uh, all in all. It does have a little more heavier recoil than all the rest of the AKs I brought out here because of two reasons. One, we're using a muzzle nut instead of the slant brake. And two, um, it's just light. It's an extremely light little gun. Everything on this gun is super, super, uh, like all the metal parts are super thin. Also, I should point out that this uh, this gas tube on here, see if I can show it. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there. The gas tube, eh, maybe, yeah, right here. The gas tube is rolled over and spot welded. Uh, it's absolutely the crudest AK parts kit I've ever seen in my life, uh, but it does shoot well. And that's kind of a tribute to the AK platform, I think, is even if you have one that's not made with probably the highest quality parts, if it's true, the AK platform design, it will run. Um, yeah, all in all, guys, I've been shooting this one a lot here lately. I killed a couple jackrabbits with it. Pretty nice little rifle. Let's go ahead and do some shooting with it.
And now for my latest edition, the uh, North Korean Type 68, as one of my YouTube subscribers called it. Kim Jong Boom. And uh, I believe we are already loaded here. Yep. Go ahead and put some rounds down range. Oh, this thing is so light. Hi. I can't tell where I'm hitting. I haven't zeroed this one yet. Hi. Try 350. Just under his feet. Over his head. To the left. Ah, it runs. I haven't zeroed this one yet, though, guys, so I'll use that as my alibi. All right, North Korean Type 68. You're at about 30 yards. Oh, that's odd. It's low. There we go. Go! Trust in God, keep your powder dry. Bye! <laughs>